Hey, hey, welcome back to the episode of the Ron Podcast. I'm your host, Juan. As always, my co-host here with me. Hey, Trip, how's it going? Hey, man, it's going really good. Uh, quick question for you. Yeah. Before we start every episode, mm-hmm. we do a clap to sure make do. sure that we could clean stuff up and know where to cut and mm-hmm. whatnot, because we talked for like hours beforehand. Mm-hmm. Did the clap even show up? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Barely. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> this is our fourth start. We got it. We we are not out of practice at all. No way, Jose. It's been like a month since we've recorded. That is not true. We recorded last week. Okay, well, it's been like a week since we recorded. Very true. And I'm just not feeling my flow yet, you know? We recorded later last week, though, because uh, we were behind and stuff. Well, you, yeah, you, it was like yeah. three days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a couple hours ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> man. Are you saying I haven't hung out with you when I haven't seen you in a bit? School's wrapping yeah. up for me. I'm excited for when you're done with that, but it's, I'm also like jealous too. It's dead week right now. Yeah. Next week's finals, and then I get vacation. That means we get to hang out. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Mm-hmm. What have you been up to? Um, it's been like a minute. What's good? Well, it's dead week right now. Yeah, it's true. Next week is finals, mm-hmm. and then spring will come around, summer will come around, and we can hang out. Ah, oh, that's um, good. No, I mean, just trying to finish a bunch of stuff up. I've been able to, you know, get through some. Uh, some projects. I'm also trying to watch some anime in the meantime. I watched a, a movie the other day. Watched uh, in the corner in, in uh in this corner of the world. I did watch that movie. That's what we're okay, actually talking about cool. this week. In this corner of the world, uh, right? Yep. It's on Netflix. Yep. Netflix movie. Hundred yep. minutes long. Hundred twenty minutes long. Good shit. How, I don't know how long it is. I don't know. Anyways, uh, here, here what I want to say is I watched a movie with Sierra. It's called Bad Samaritan. Okay, yes. Sierra hits me up and says, hey, I want to watch this movie. He's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, <clears throat> she's like, it kind of reminds her of like, uh, Don't Breathe. You know, the, the movie where they, mm-hmm. they people yeah. break into the house and the guy's blind, but he's a total badass. And he's they got to be sneaky sallies around in the blind bat. It's kind of like that. So it's about a, a friend who's a, uh, two friends with their valets. They're, they're, their shtick is like to st- fucking take rich people's cars to their mm. house. Yeah. Steal their stuff. Mm, that sounds the, like a bad Samaritan thing. Yeah, goes to the house. Yeah, opens it up. Uh huh. Finds like a uh, like a bunch of I don't know like a fucking stuffs to steal. Then he finds like a woman tied up and leathered and beaten up. Oh, that's not good. And then he leaves and he calls the cops. Cops don't see it. And so then it becomes a whole thing. The movie was so bad. It felt like an it felt like an episode of like Criminal Minds that mm-hmm. was just too long. Oh my god, horrible movie. Don't watch it, guys. Bad Samaritan. Bad Samaritan. <laughs> All right, bad anime. Bad bad anime. Worst anime of the year. Yeah. Um. Besides that, I caught up with a bunch of other things. Oh, uh, yeah? I caught up with uh, My Hero. Ooh. Megalobox. Uh, um, I watched some for Darling the Franx. Darling. Uh, what else did I watch? I watched uh, Major the Second. Uh-huh. Which I'm really liking. Uh, it's really... It's right here. Yeah. The old R- chest. Right in the center of your chest. Mm-hmm. Right in that big old cavity right there. Yeah, yeah I got a big old hole in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else have I been doing? Man, nothing really. Just just fucking staying afloat. Yeah. You know. You've been doing thug shit. Thug shit. Uh I went drinking the other night. Oh shit. Yeah, I went drinking I went drinking twice this week as uh, Thursday. I was drinking with some buddies. Uh huh. Because it was you know because it was the third. Because it was Thursday. Yeah, yeah. It was third sty Thursday. So we went out and then he ended up puking. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's wonderful. Yeah, outside of my car. I'd push him. Ooh. I like, pushed his head out the window as he puked. <laughs> it was nice uh and then i think i remember those snaps yeah that was yeah. looking crazy and then saturday I went out with some buddies from school uh a buddy of mine was having a rough go he's like mm-hmm. he needs a drink it's like yeah man we all need a drink <laughs> <laughs> so we drank went to u-bar we played yeah. uh, air hockey i went fucking undefeated for like seven matches and then my my boy who i beat the i think it was the first guy i beat or the second guy I beat he came up to rematch me just smoked me and Ugh. i was like my my arm was like tired my elbow hurt um i was like sweating and then i was like i just you know what just i'm not built for this game no more man hang on did you hear that did did you hear it no oh it sounded like an excuse to me we don't make excuses oh, in this household was... motherfucker um i wasn't making excuses i was doing my my best <laughs> the other people were making excuses like oh the table's shit like the air hockey is like all oh, it's like the, it's like the holes are plugged up yeah, and no it's like coming yeah, out every air hockey table sucks dick <laughs> just like, get good he's like the puck get yeah, good yeah that's like the puck is too small um oh, i was just like on. yeah i know and i'm still whooping ass it's yeah. it's like a it is a really shitty table it's like it's at a yeah, bar Dude, just no, like, i feel you that's been had like years of fucking abuse it's i feel horrible. like your side probably has a couple of coasters underneath so it naturally <laughs> just, just like even, slides yeah. in yeah so um played some air hockey uh one they got thrashed this this is what really burnt me up Trip, check it out yeah so um i'm going up there's it's uh, this is, now it's cinco de mayo for this day so we're going out 
um, the line is for like fucking forever at the bar. I was like, you know what? Uh-huh. I really want, I'm going to get two pictures that way. I save time on having to come back again. I right. go, hey, can I get a pale ale and a blue moon? Uh-huh. Sure. So she pours it and like she puts it down in front of me. She goes, takes my card and I look at the first beer, which is the pale ale. And it's yeah. like, that looks way too light to be a pale ale. And then I look at the next one. It's like, that for sure is a blue moon. Like I know what they look like. And uh-huh. I smell the pale ale. I was like, this isn't a pale ale. So I like, I, I, I hand, handed it to a homie at first, looked at it, brought it back. And then I go, she gives me my card and go, hey, I point at the picture. I was like, is this a pale ale? And she looks at it and she goes, yeah, it looks me fucking dead in my eyes. And goes like, yeah, it's a pale ale. I was like, okay, that's fine. Sit down, drink it. Not a fucking pale ale. It was no fucking way. It, it was like some pineapple ale or some shit like that. Like a pineapple Whoa. cider. I was like, what the Whoa. fuck? I, like, the thing that upset me wasn't the fact that she was, a, was the fact that she lied to me. She was, yeah. she was like, yeah, that is what you ordered. Was like no fucking way. And then I remember going back up later and like seeing where she pulled the tap from. The pale ale and the blue moon are an opposite sides of each other like, and she like, like hung they, out on the blue moon they're, they're side on the furthest they're on yeah. the furthest things but when she poured it she was able to reach for the blue moon and then reach also the like the whatever the in quotations pale was and pour them at the same time so i was like that's a lie she it's physically like i couldn't be they're too uh, far away from man. me to reach them see my my whole thing is people make mistakes yeah that's okay own up to them i love when people own up to their mistakes you can uh, honestly excuses are always valid it's yeah. like there are reasons that things go wrong you can make an excuse as long as you admit to what you did wrong. It's just like, oh, shit, man. I'm so sorry. This is the reason why that happened. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. You said pale ale, but the last I, guy changed his order from pale ale to, like, pineapple yeah. sunbreeze yeah. or whatever the fuck. Yeah, like, no. that would be fine. You can make any kind of excuse, and I'm okay with yeah. that. Well, the bar was full. She was the only bartender. Mm-hmm. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. And I can, and it was loud. I imagine me saying pale ale, She's and she heard pineapple she's like yeah. whatever that's what he wants yeah and you know what that's fine yeah, she's gonna admit that she everyone like, hey, knows wrong. that that situation's fucked up I, for her i would have been like this is what I, if she would have said oh sorry that's not i put you the wrong thing i would have been like she probably would ask do you want me to pour you a new one i would have been like it's okay yeah i'll drink it right but the fact that she lied to me is what really oh, burned me up I bitch like, fucking bi-. and i and i tipped her because like, yeah i was to gonna tip. say how much did you tip i tipped the appropriate amount Oh, uh, you beautiful bastard. I, I would like, too. Because I was like, ah, fuck. Because like, then if I don't tip her, then I come back again and get another drink. It's just like, she's either going to give me shitty service or not give me what I want to get. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm like a pretty good tipper. Yeah. So when I'm you mad are, at somebody, yeah. I give them adequate tipping. I'm like, you piece of shit. You're not even going to know that I'm mad at you right now. Yeah. But you could be so much happier. Like, yeah, you tip the uh, the shawarma chick. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I was yeah. like, what did, what happened? You know, because you're like, I got tip. And I was yeah. like, oh, you must have tipped her more than you should have. Yeah, because that's what you do. That's, yeah, that's what the kind of guy you are. But right. uh, for me, it's just like, yeah, like I usually tip more than like what the like fifteen percent, whatever, right? Twenty percent. Yeah, fifteen is like average right now. Yeah, so a lot of people go eighteen, but like twenty yeah. is like a good tip. I usually go. I usually like look at where fifteen is, like cool, and add a few extra bucks after yeah. that. But I was just like, no, I'm just gonna give you what you deserve because what the fuck, this is bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. No, I the feel fact, you. Yeah, I just was really, I was, I was really <laughs> burnt up about it. All night, totally. couldn't get past it. No, I feel uh, you. Even even at school today, I was like, "That fucking bitch." Lied. <laughs> Still that fucking about bitch it. lied Still to me. Still resting on yeah. that. Yeah, that shawarma chick was so appreciative too. Yeah. And I didn't even tip her like that well. I didn't think I, I felt like I tipped her like good, better than like a normal person because she kept refilling our drinks. Yeah. Like she noticed that they would go down, and she got it. And there weren't many people there, so it was easy for her to do. But a lot of people just sit there and they're like, whatever, no one, nobody's here. I don't need to work that hard. Yeah, I feel But it. she worked fucking hard. So I gave her like a $10 tip on, uh, I don't know, like a 30-something dollar meal or yeah, whatever. Yeah, shout out to Chick. Yeah. And like a $10 tip isn't that much. But for what we ordered, yeah, that's, like, math, yeah, that's, that's a good a lot, amount. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, she was so appreciative. I'm like, it's just 10 bucks. Like, of course, you, you go have a great rest of your day. Did. Like, if I tipped her 20 bucks, that would be like, oh, 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 oh no. big spender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, big pimpin' over here. Uh, yeah. But um, there are times yeah, like that, like, you clearly I was, wouldn't have been, like, tipped. The, I don't know. I, I was she just done fucking wrong. lied to you. She lied to me. She's a bitch. What a bitch. She lied to me. Who hasn't lied to you this week? <sighs> um... <laughs> Mid- okay. People keep you lying to me, Trip. <laughs> People just keep nonstop lying to me. You're just me. over there, like, oh my god, I've just been lied to so many times. I, I just don't, don't know how long to, I'm gonna I, take it. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Yeah, it's true. You can't trust you lied anyone. To me. You had fucking game night to invite me. Okay, first shut off, up, shut, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Wasn't a lie. Shut up. 
Second off, I didn't even tell you. See, that's the I didn't tell you about it, but I was I was trying to invite you, and you're like, oh yeah, I got anime storm today. You know, you but I didn't, you called it anime storm. Oh my god, you just went with it, and you're you, like, that's you all said, I'm hey, calling man, it. Today's anime storm night. I was just like, yeah, sh- yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> And then that instantly meant Juan can't hang out at all. Yeah, well, anime storm is a lot. It's a storm. It's a five hour long storm. A storm could be a hurricane. Could. Just, just for example, you know. Trip, what, uh, how you been, man? What's good? Oh, man. You? I've been pretty okay. <laughs> like today was a long ass day, but the rest of the week, it's been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Started playing some God of War. Been wanting nice. to do that for a while. Nice. Oh, man. It is a gorgeous game. There's some good stuff in there. Your little boy, he's he's a fun ass time. I've been having a great time myself. Uh, I'm sure literally anybody that's ever played it knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, when I'm oh just like, that is totally wrong, boy. What? There is this kid in my major. I don't know if I've told you about him. He's a foreign kid. Mm. Total fucking douche. Yeah, I don't know his name. We just call him the tool kid because he's such okay, a tool. Because he's a tool. Yeah. Apparently, last week at the club meeting for you know our my major, which is yeah animation game development. They had a guy from Sony who was there. Oh, shit. He's, I think he's the audio, like a senior audio, whatever, tech guy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he came in to talk to him about what it's like to um, like get your foot in the door for the industry, whatever. You uh-huh. know? And this fucking foreign kid. Fucking, it's not that he's a foreigner. He's just an asshole. He just happens to be a foreigner or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't know what he's French or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. But he just, he keeps asking these questions that are like not on topic. Like he's there to be like, hey guys, this is what it's like to try to get a job in the real world. He's just like, yeah, so for the God of War or whatever. Oh my like, God. Why do you think they did this? I think it's a bad game. And the guy's like, oh, well, you know, okay. Uh, well, my thing that I was going to say, it wasn't about it being a good or a bad game because I enjoy it. It's a fucking fun ass game to me. Mm-hmm. Other people can hate it. I don't give a shit. But everyone's in agreement about one thing. And it's that whenever fucking <laughs> Kratos says, Boy, boy, so much. He's like, boy, boy, boy. His, his, just over his, and over. Isn't that his son's name? It's just boy. It's <laughs> Atreus. Yeah, boy. Yeah, and he keeps boy. Everybody knows that, boy. you know, like, and the whole Robert fucking internet or whatever. has fucking lost it over boy. That's how it is. So great. Cause, like, I don't know if you know the whole, like, heavy rain meme where you go around and you're looking in the mall at the beginning of the game for your son and you're going around like, Jason, Jason, I gotta find Jason jason it's like that Never it's that heard, level yeah. oh yeah that's that's a big one that's the a that big I'm boy right now is the the trumpet kid trumpet kid's a big one uh <laughs> today bart hitting homer with a oh, chair yeah that was pretty blew funny the fuck yeah. up uh yeah there have been some good memes um and we got a good darling in the Bronx one for like a minute oh, there. The one where the, she's like has a gun, or the one where she's just like no, no, no. crying or whatever. Yeah, no, they're they're crying. Uh, Zero two and Hero are crying, and they're like looking at each other and just like saying things. And people keep like putting in little things over their voices and like. Bah, bah. Yeah, but my favorite one was the banjo kazooie one. As soon as it came in, with yeah, yeah. I fucking love that game. It. And I fucking love that shit. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite banjo kazooie voice? I like uh, I like kazooie. I think kazooie is a good one. I it's a girl, like right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I like her. Kazooie's cool. I really like. Um, <sighs> I don't even remember. I don't his like name. the witch. You don't like Gruntilda? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> that one's a good one though. I love it. Um, I don't remember his name. Uh, Jam Jars. Jam Jars from oh, yeah, Banjo Kazooie Two. Okay, yeah, those are the... He's a little mole man. Uh, fucking love him. Is that, what, is that the guy you save at? Um, no, you you don't really save at somebody. I don't think he teaches you some new moves and whatnot. He knows how to get like down. pops out of this little like manhole thing, and he's like, oh, and yeah. he pops up. And you're like, I, fucking what is his voice? It's it's so it's so specific, and I'm frustrated that I had it and then I lost it because I started thinking of it, his brother or something. Bottles who's like, <laughs> you know that one? No, that sounds that sounds familiar. But he come. I don't know. He's like he ho. That was terrible. That wasn't even fucking close. But he's great. I love him. And has a little whistling in the background. Yes. Long story short, I should like have God been a voice. 3. I should have been a voice actor. You like God of War it's 4. God of War four. God of War. Just God of War. It's fucking beautiful. Uh, I haven't been watching too much anime this week because my boy Carl got sick. 
Uh, he's been a little sicky sick boy. I'm not talking to Kyle right now. He didn't respond to my text. Listen, he can't no, I'm afford not talking to. Him right now. He can't breathe. I'm not talking to him. He has a throat, and it's not working. Is he? Is he like in the hospital or something? Nah, he's just got. Care. He's ah, fine, man. Kyle, please ah, this. I don't man. know if you, you text him. I texted him the same thing I texted you. It was like life of whatever. Oh, I took care of it so quickly, and it wasn't life of anything. It was Lisa. It's just Lisa. Lisa the. The painful Lisa, the, Lisa the hell, or Lisa yeah, the hell. they're like there's it, three of them. I think yeah, exactly. The Lisa you played that you series. told me about you played a game where like trip to Oregon or something like that. What it's like it's like a, a game. It's essentially not Oregon. It's Canada. It's like you're essentially it's like oh yeah, death trip to Canada. That's sure, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why I asked you. A buddy of mine was playing that. He was telling me about it. I was like that sounds really familiar. And it reminded me of the game DJ played. Yeah, and then, it, he, was, and then he was describing to me the like the Canada game. It was like oh, I think Trip told me about that. Where you make your own yeah. you made us right. You made us in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fun. That was a fun little time. Uh, speaking of games, I finished this game that I've been playing for a while called Night in the Woods. Oh man, it fucked me up. I like the way that <laughs> the game looked. It looks fucking great. Uh, some of the dialogue is fantastic. You're like hopping on your computer saying like what up to people in the morning, you like check and see what's everyone doing today? Who am I gonna go talk to? And then at night you'd like check in with everyone and be like, Man, fucking today, right? This is what I did today. Like, what'd you do? Stuff like that. And your buddy Greg, uh, <laughs> you're talking to him and he's like, All right, bro, I gotta leave. Uh good night as F, bro. And you're like, Good night as F, yeah. night as hell. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, Hell yeah. It's fucking cracked me up. Um that was one little fun thing. But then it got like really dark and intense. Not like dark, dark, but like emotionally dark, I guess. Yeah. Because you know that there was some incident that happened when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, not a kid, but like a teenager. And then you know that you dropped out of college, but you don't know why. Are you sorry? Are you a girl or a guy cat? You're a girl. You see, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But also, I think you're bi. You might just be lesbian. I don't know. But you meet some a hot chick at a party. <laughs> You guys make no, like a pentagram. You meet a hot chick at the party. Hell yeah. And you meet like a, or you make a pentagram handshake with them. Cause I don't know. You just put your hands in the shape of a pentagram. It works. We have too many fingers, so oh, it doesn't okay. work out I'm quite just, as well. Don't worry about I it. I tried to figure out like, how do we do this? <laughs> we're if not, we fingers, we're not cartoons. Solid, yeah. yeah. We'll make it. Yeah. It's all good. Um, but anyways, like it starts explaining that and just explaining like how you, your character may starts realizing like, everything that she sees and like all the entertaining things, all the games, TV shows and stuff are just written by people. All the characters are fake and not real. Mm -hmm. And she's realizing that. And then she's having trouble like focusing on what, what everything is. Cause she used to just see it as like, everything's like marvelous and it's beautiful and whatnot. And then she starts as like teenagers do, they start realizing the harsh reality of things. But yeah. instead for her, it's like everything she looks at just looks like blocks and shapes and it doesn't feel like, any actual thing. So she just looks at a tree and she sees some shapes that are kind of like a tree and she knows that it's a tree, but it's all fucked up now. So time goes on and she's getting more and more frustrated. And she eventually just like, she's playing a game of baseball and she beats the fuck out of the pitcher that she felt like was looking at her weird, but she was just like, and the shapes were looking at me weird. So then I went over with my bat and I started beating the fuck out of them. And then red shapes started coming out and there was so many red shapes. And it's just like explaining that there's just like, you just beat the fuck out of some kid because you became like emotionally unstable. So you got some help from the local doctor who's not a psychologist or psychiatrist or anything that could actually help you just like a doctor dude. And, uh, it resolves the issue kind of, but then you go off to college and then you start like struggling and, or she starts struggling, whatever. Uh, and she's just like having trouble going to classes and like meeting people and everything's terrifying and she just gets like depressed and everything starts feeling like shapes again. So she drops out, goes back home and then she's comfortable and she sees everything for what it is. And she's like kind of figuring out where she should be in her life. I was like, fuck man, that got like really intense and dark. And all this is happening. Talking to your friend about her mom that just died like recently and like, Oh man, so much of it. Meanwhile, I'm just like good night is F brah <laughs> like having a good time over there and then it got so fucking real and I'm sitting there like before even all this like college dropout beating the fuck out of people having a, a breakdown or whatever before that 
there were a couple of like conversations just like, yeah, I can't even feel like, you know, I am myself. I have to stay at home. I have to do all this work. Like you're talking to your friend who's saying all this. I have to do all this work because my dad can't function anymore ever since my mom died. So I've got to do this. So I like going to these college parties a couple hours away so that I feel like I'm a part of something. And I've been so envious of you, even though you like fucking dropped out, you piece of shit. I kind of hate you, even though you're like my best friend, you piece of shit and all this. I'm like, damn, that sucks. Like, I don't even have any aspirations anymore. What am I fucking do with my life? And I start getting really existential. I'm like, I used to love writing. I, still can't I used tell to if, love. I can't tell if you're talking about the no, game I'm, anymore. Now I'm talking about me. You see, now I'm really yeah. bummed out. What are you doing? Yeah, no, I was fucking bummed out. So I'm like, I used to love writing. I used to love like making these movies and said, stuff. I used to love playing music. And <laughs> now I'm like, where the fuck am I in my life? <laughs> you're like, I'm envious of you. I was like, oh fuck, I'm in trouble. What do I do? Oh, no, 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 you're you're all good there. <laughs> Yeah, Damn it, it was a whole this is not thing. what I wanted to talk about no, no. today. So I'm like, oh, fuck. And when a game that's just fucking, it's like cartoony and fun and goofy. It, it, when it like hits you like that, I'm like, how did that even happen? I'm just like talking to this poetry girl who's like, hey, yeah, check it out. I wrote all these things. Yeah, I got, I got a kid or whatever. Like, whatever. It's all good. I had a kid too young. Eh. I'm like, okay. Eh. What are video games anymore, man? I'm playing God of War, just beating the fuck out of people. And then I'm like, I just want to go over here and get a little bit sad, but laugh at the same time. I'm going to play some Night in the Woods. I haven't watched much anime this week <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Instead, I've had some existential crises and uh, what am I even fucking doing with my life? But it was Cinco de Cuatro the other day. So, (laughs) and for those of you that don't know this, uh, Cinco de Cuatro is a holiday created by the Bluths in Arrested Development. So they posted on Netflix a season four remix. So it used to be 15 episodes. Now it's like 22. They added a bunch more stuff and they put the story together in a way that feels more like it flows together instead of everyone being separate. Season five comes out at the end of the month. I watched that for Cinco de Cuatro. That's what I did. It was a good time. Well, um, let's talk about the news. Why don't we fucking do that? And it's fine. I just felt like we should. <laughs> I felt like we should set the tone because World War II movie. Me out. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to get you bummed. That's, the movie didn't bum me out. Made me super happy. Whoa. World War II, best World War. Okay. Well, I mean. You yeah, know, so you're, far. You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. What did I say? Is that what I said? Yeah, you're like, we're not wrong. <laughs> well, I'm like, mm, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to get into the anime news. Uh, ignore or don't ignore. You know what? If you need to talk to somebody, email us because Trip's having a time right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could help y'all out. I, <laughs> but you got to make sure to email us because I check those emails. I'm really bad at the other stuff. We will still get around to the other things, but emails are always the one that I go to. Okay. So let's let's do some anime news because this I'm is so down. I don't know if you guys forgot. I am so. This, welcome this, to the Instant Wrong this Podcast. This is an anime podcast. All we do is talk about anime and nothing else. So <laughs> let's get into the news. Let's go. The Japanese box office has sold more tickets to Detective Conan than Avengers Infinity War in its third weekend. Detective Conan, is that's the uh that's the guy with the top hat, yeah? Kind of. That's Professor Layton. Oh, Detective yeah. Conan's the little, the little nerd. guy with the big glasses, right? Yeah. You know what I found out the other day? What? That guy's an adult. Yeah. He got turned into a little kid. Fucking wild, right? He's such a fucking good detective. Figure your shit out. Turn back into an adult. Sometimes you like being a little kid. No. Okay, nothing wrong. No, 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 Whoa. No. Little kids okay. can't drink beer. Little kids can't drink beer, but what they can do is wake up at 6 a.m. and play video games until they have to go to school. I can do that, too. Whoa. Could you watch, like, Monster Rancher, too? No, because that doesn't air anymore. Actually, it could. I could just Google it. That's true. <laughs> Anyways, monsters. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. Uh, good for them. Um, I don't know if... I I don't think I've ever seen a Detective Conan episode, so I can't tell you if it's better than Infinity War. But I mean, I guess J- Japan knows what they like, so. you and know, it's I'm not a, Infinity War. I'm a USA good old boy piece of shit. You know, I don't watch any of that anime weeb shit with little boys turning into the big men turning into little boys detectiving. Not for me. You know, that's not. I'm not about that life. I'm only, I'm only about Did those you say big you're old not a titties. Weeb? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm only about them big old titties. That's why I watch anime. America. For some K Joe. I was <laughs> what, whatever I, what is this episode? <laughs> I don't know, man. This is fucking schizophrenia point oh five. Um so K Joe. I was reading a conversation That's the boob and butt one game. Right? The boob and butt okay, one I game. So, yeah. All it's right, it's they, an anime about 
Sumo women that play, that play a, like a water sport where they knock each other off a platform with their boobs and butts. Continue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so somebody was in a conversation, or when I say somebody, I mean, internet strangers were talking to each other about what a, uh, what a terrible anime would be to watch and have somebody walk in on you watching it. Keijo. And somebody's like, Keijo. And immediately somebody's like, um, actually, I watched this with my mom and dad. And... <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, oh, my goodness. I just, and uh, their oh. parents were super fucking into it. They're like, oh, yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> what? Look, I, I, was, I was blown away. <laughs> Earlier this week, I found out that my, one of my friends yeah. watches anime with his mom. I mean, not sorry, not his mom also watches anime. Yeah. She got him an anime. I yeah. was like, wait, hold on. I was like, but not like just like, you know. The, the simple stuff like fucking studio ghibli shit you yeah know? yeah like she she likes like she watches she watches like de- like watches like detective stuff supernatural things like she watched uh what's it was called joker's game which came out a couple yeah, seasons back yeah she watched um paranoia agent or whatever i was like oh, okay that's yeah cool. she's into that good shit and i was like man look at, and i'm like i was i was just like so blown away it's like you, like you just go up to your mom and it's like hey mom this fucking latest episode of my hero am i right you know and then she goes like yeah fucking deku up there act like a bitch or whatever you know <laughs> and then she, he goes yeah you'd think so but since it's been like that my whole life it's just kind of normal yeah like, exactly so it becomes weird, normal though. i don't well, think i could ever convince my mom to watch any anime with me let alone keijo i i completely don't even try that shit right mm-hmm. um but i I talk about what I do and what my life is, yeah. and uh, it was my mom's birthday the other week, and happy we birthday. were, hey, Trips mom. happy birthday, Trips mom. Hold on, I know her name. Mm. It's two words put together. It's not. It's, it starts with the P. No. It starts with the, oh, Robin. Yep. Nailed it. It's not even close. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, give, me, give, me, give, me, give me the first letter. Uh, T. Teresa. Nope. Tiffany. No. Tasha. No. Tina. No. Tanya. Yes. Is it? Yes. Nice. Yeah. First try. First try. Uh, so anyways, shout outs to my mom. Shout outs to mom. being who she is. Uh, anyways, we were out to dinner and we were talking and I was telling them about Violet Evergarden because that was yeah. the week that we watched that. I was like, yeah, it was like really fucking good. Explaining all that. You cried? Yeah, of course. Like, uh, I'm, oh, bitch. But um, yeah, I'm telling her and uh, her fiance all this and they're both just like, Damn, I had no idea anime was like Rosemary. that at all. Rose, hey, you got Ooh. her name. Nice. I love lesbians, so it's true. You know, my mom's. <laughs> she also forgot her it? name. She's your mom. How's that work? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I don't exist. Is what <laughs> start floating away know. like fucking uh, a spider man. And shit. <laughs> um. So, so yeah. you told her about Evergarden. Yeah, I told her about that, and she was like, "Man, I might have to watch that." And she brings it up now every time that she's like, "What things should I watch?" And I'm like, um, I don't know. Hey, I mean, I'm like in like Brooklyn Nine Nine right now, and she's like, maybe I'll start Violet Evergarden. I, I'm like, I wanna, maybe I want to try Brooklyn Nine Nine because I mean, I see a clip recently. There's the clip of Andy Samberg seeing Backstreet Boys mm-hmm. with the lineup. Yeah, and every time that that because it's like a bunch of people repost it, different bunch yeah. of different pages. Every time I come across it. I watch the whole thing and every time I watch it, I have a great, I always laugh and just like, there's some great skits. And so I always just like, God, maybe this show is cause I don't like, um, Andy Samberg. Okay. Yeah. But I was just like, man, well, that, that is a funny fucking little bit. You know, it's not Andy Samberg's show. It's, yeah, no. uh, it's Michael Schur. I think it's his name. He made the parks and rec, oh, okay, okay. uh, the good place and this, and those are all like amazing shows. Um, yeah. Anyways, Let's get back to the news. Let's go so back I, to anime news. You yeah. remember that time that I mentioned monsters? Yeah. All right. Well, cool. That kind of ties into this. You remember from like forever ago. Anyways, a new Digimon project has been announced. I heard about this. Is, yeah. is it like a... Is it Digimon? They haven't said anything about is it yet. It Digimon but. Adventures, but Digimon Adventures Try or something like that? Like they're doing the next group of Digimon people and they're bringing them forward? I mean, Digimon Try has been out for like a while. Yeah, but, but I'm saying like, but, but Digimon Try was like, I the, I mean, I'm saying like the first season, you know, there's like the first yeah. Digidestined kids yeah. and then there's like a second group of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they were going to do Try with them. I, I don't know. They haven't really announced anything mm. about it yet, but I can tell you that the Agumon that they have in like the, the Twitter picture or whatever it looks so fucking good. Hey. It's just like a great looking Agumon. It's, it looks kind of realistic. I wanna, honestly, I want to see how good your nerdum is. Agumon Digibob 2. Uh, Greymon? It's yeah. Greymon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what Agumon. 
Agumon's the little T Rex looking one, right? Yeah. yeah, he does turn to Greymon. Yeah, okay. Greymon, and then but it could also be Skull Greymon if shit goes wrong, oh, yeah, which you don't want shit goes wrong. Little, it's a little dark. Is it Metal Greymon Metal after Greymon. that? And then they they fuse together and become like Guru Greymon. <laughs> ah man, yeah, no, I guess I Where get, Greymon. No, I guess I did the wrong one because like the one I like turns into Guru Mon. Yeah, which one's the first one of that? Uh fuck what is his little name oh he's so adorable he right i fucking there? love him yeah i love him i don't remember his name right now and i'm fucking gabumon 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 Okay, Mon. cool. So, uh, are you excited for this? I know you yeah, I mean, you weren't the biggest fan of Try. So, my my issue with Try, for those of you that don't know, is I really liked Digimon as a kid. It was a great kid show with a story that went on. It had some darker themes. It dealt with some like kind of weird things, like a uh, adoption. That's not something that's very common in in uh, a lot of television and whatnot. It deals with death in certain ways, and uh, I really like the idea of it. And a lot of friendship and a lot of like sibling feuds, but it, done in a more realistic way versus like oh, I'm mad at you because we're siblings. Ah, everything's okay. It was like a while with this shit going on. Um, it it deals with all that. Also, <laughs> divorce deals with divorce good shit for a kid show hitting on all the fucking yeah all the little like hot topics like ooh, we're just gonna throw that one in there and here's another one over here oh by the way that yelling in the background is trip's uh roommate he's gotten back into playing league of legends very loudly it's true i don't know how well it comes through but, but I, I can uh, sure as hell hear it all the fucking time all he does is scream um <laughs> <laughs> well okay so did you want adventures try uh was kind of like um it, it, it was trying to be a more adult Digimon. They all grew up. It was trying to. Oh, my God. Juan <laughs> over there with your fucking sly ass look. You're just oh. like, oh, man, I'm, I'm about to fucking oh, get this boy. I fucking blew your brains out. <laughs> oh, shit. You killed me? Yeah, dead. Oh, Wasted. man. Uh, so it tried to be a more adult Digimon, <laughs> but they... We're it attempted so to be a more adult Digimon, but it, it just, it, I don't think it found what it actually wanted to be. Mm-hmm. It was trying to t- hold too much onto what it was in the past mm-hmm. while still like being something new. Cause they want to keep new fans available, mm-hmm. but keep old fans happy. Yeah, exactly. But I think one of the things is the old fans want it to be adult because we've all seen Digimon. We know what that's all about, but now we're in it because holy up, shit, yeah. look at them. They're like adults and it's more realistic and they did a pretty good job with that. But I just found myself so uh, I, I couldn't attach myself to any characters. I just felt like I was watching nothing happen with like things that I'm familiar with. It was mm. bizarre. That's weird. So I'm hoping that this new project, whatever it is, is going to be a good one. Who okay. knows? I mean, maybe Digimon Adventure Try gets like good halfway through. I watched, th- I think they had three or four episodes out, and I watched all those, and I was like, okay, well, not for me, I guess. Bummer. Um, but it's they surprising because you you love Digimon. I, I I don't know how much you know about this, but I fucking loved Digimon I know you love so Digimon. much. <sighs> but I don't I don't have much more news. I just got one more little piece for you, which is why I've been kind of trying to stretch this a little bit. So. A movie called Let's Decorate the Promised Flowers in the Farewell Morning is going to have a July 20th United States release date. Now, I don't know if you recognize how fucking long that name is no. and what some of the key components are. Re- um, no. So, uh, I'll never forget the name of the flower we saw that day. <gasps> oh, Same dude made this movie. So, we're going to get sad is pretty much what's going to happen. Oh, nice. It's going to be... A, it's a reboot. It's a Anahana reboot. Yeah, essentially, it's or an Anahana Pachinko reboot. Machine. Definitely a Pachinko... Well, we already know it's a movie, but there's always a chance it could change over. They're like, you know what? We got to shift gears last second. Pachinko machines. Just like come to the movie theater. Like, uh, okay, I'm just going to pull two this. Hour, it's just two hours of a Pachinko machine being played on the screen. Like, nice. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Cool, man. Uh, July 11th? 20th. 20th. Okay, so that'd be after Anime Expo. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I watched a little bit of the trailer, but I was at works and and I had to work like all fucking day and I couldn't watch much, but I wanted to watch more. And then I came home and Don't I forgot cry. about it. <laughs> no. Don't cry. It's okay. I'm not crying. 
You're crying. Fuck you. <clears throat> Not crying. Okay, cool. That's uh, that's good. I can't wait to see that. Uh, and it's gonna get a U.S. release, which is nice. We usually don't get those, so yeah, good, man. Good for us. Man. I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Um, so we'll we'll see. It's already come out. It came out in like February. Oh, nice. I think. But yeah, it's good to know that there's a United States release. Might have been around for a while, but a promotional video was just posted for it today. Maybe it was even just a regular ass trailer. I don't know. I'm not I'm not king of whatever the fuck we're talking about. Okay. Cool. Cool. So that's that's the news. Uh, let's get into this week's topic. Let's really uh let's try to focus trip. But this right. week we're talking about a nice little Netflix movie called In This Corner of the World. So In This Corner of the World was directed by Sunao Katabuchi. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's directed things like Black Lagoon, Princess Arete, and uh, he's assistant directed Kiki's Delivery Service. Ooh, I know uh-huh. what two of those are. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure if you saw the cover to Princess Arete, you would know what oh, it is looks that the, like. Is that the chick that's like a... Oh, no. It's very watercolor looking, but it's like really minimalistic. I was going to say, is that the lesbian chick? But that's that's like something, Princess Mary Ka or something like that or... Um, I I don't know who the lesbian chick is, but I'm way interested right now. I'll look into it. Okay. Yeah, keep keep me up to date with that in actual life. It's made by the studio Mappa, who did things like Kakegurui, nice. which uh, there has been a live action introduced to Netflix. We'll Ayo, get around to that eventually. Ayo. Just add that to the live action garbage list. Uh, and then Mappa's also made Yuri on Ice and <gasps> Kids on the Slope. Oh, my God. How much did I cry at Kids on the Slope? I'll tell you how much. A lot. Yeah, so much. Shit's good. And Shit's you're good. Ah, oh, what a fucking intro. Horrible show. Great intro. Horrible no, no, great show. show. No, great show. <laughs> Bro, they were bound to make history. As, as good as the show was, the intro was so much better than the show. Oh, man, it was. Uh, but, man, I, I really wanted some pork cutlet bowls, let me tell oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wish someone would look at me the way he really looks at pork cutlet bowls. Damn. Damn. Um, anyways. So, in this corner of the world, I... Uh, it kind of caught my attention at first mm-hmm. because it has this. It looks sexy, simple, really sexy I, cover. I wouldn't say that, Ooh, but it looks sexy. simple but really stylized. Yeah, um, you know what it reminded me of? Okay, the, when I soon as I started watching it, it just reminded me of like a Matilda cartoon. Okay, you know what sure. I'm saying? Like it was like really like the simple drawings or whatever. And yeah, like, oh. and then I was like, oh no, it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't Matilda. It was more like Tintin is what it was really reminding me of. Like old school yeah, yeah, Tintin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's definitely stylized and it's definitely cartoony. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty. It's not necessarily like watercolor, but it has that kind of like palette, palette where yeah. everything looks a little bit muted. I, I really like the way it looked. It looks great. I thought the style was awesome. The, it, yeah. So the thing that kind of threw me off um, at first was... Our main character is an adult, but she's pretty small. <laughs> yeah. Just, and I could not figure out how old she was for like a minute. Um, I was talking to somebody in school about that. They're like, like, yeah, it's just, I know they're telling me she's 20, but this bitch looks like she's nine. I was like, I know, right? Dude, I totally get it. Um, like, cause she, she might look like she's nine, but also have you ever met a short ass, like adult who looks yeah, like a kid? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they exist. I get what they were going for, but definitely because other style, um, age was kind of hard to gauge in the thing. Yeah. Unless they were hunched over with a cane and like mm-hmm. gray hair, like, Oh, that's an old person. Yeah. Even like the little kids, like how old is this kid? I, I can't really tell you. Know? It's like kid age, but yeah. how, like, is it, I can't function at all mm-hmm. or is it like, I'm self-confident. The, and the thing is with this anime is that there's for sure like time lapses that we get and we do get dates or whatever, but if you're kind of ignoring the dates, yeah, I was like, oh, cool. The time time has, you know, like, you know, fucking passed. But I was like, oh, wait, how old is she? Wait, it goes through, wait, like, a couple wait, years. She's old enough to get married now? I was like, yeah. she doesn't look like she's changed that much physically, you know? Right, exactly. Oh, damn it. I dropped my jerky. <laughs> what are you uh, going to do about it? Nothing you can do. Suck it off the floor. <sighs> Anyways, but, yeah, I do agree. The um, the um That choice, it's and it's because of the style they went with, is uh was a little kind of, I don't know, kind of threw me off a little bit, too. And I... <sighs> There was nothing wrong with it. I think that that wasn't... It, it was, like, such a cool style and everything. But that was the one thing that I was like, man, I'm having trouble. <laughs> but you know what? But that there was nothing said, wrong with that. It wasn't as big as an issue uh, oh, it wasn't for me all. as like it was for when it was in Violet Evergarden. We're just like, that's yeah, a child. Like, right. shut the fuck up. That's a full-grown lady right there. Oh, she yeah. is 18 or 24 years old. Oh, Anywhere absolutely. Anywhere in between there, you know? And I'm like, like, I've seen children before. They don't look like full-grown adults. Yeah. Full-grown adults might look like children. Yeah. I don't know if you know this little man named Andy Milanakis, but he looks like he's 10 years old. Yeah. 
I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's just like that. Or like a lesbian Some, chick. I don't know. I'm an orphan, so I don't know what my birthday is. But I've uh, been told I'm 14. Fuck you, bitch. They're lying to you. There's no <laughs> fucking way of 14. So we didn't quite have that issue with yeah, uh, I mean, this so, movie. So the issue with her being like, you know, looking younger than she was or not not accurately portraying what the age she was. Yeah. I was like, it's okay. It's because of the style they chose. And I was fine with that. Mm-hmm. After, after a bit. After the fact, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about... Um, you want to talk about the story real quick, and then we'll just cut Take off before it away. we spoil it. Yeah. Okay. So it's based in World War II, which I don't know when when this was. <laughs> like, this was a big issue for me because I know I went to school. I know I did history. I know I learned about World War II. You sure did. And I know which side Japan's on in World War II. Yeah. No, not our side. Oh <laughs> shit. Okay. The bad guys' side, the axis of evil, if you will. Uh huh. Um, that being said, super interesting to see. Um, you know, war portrayed through the eyes of the other side, right? Mm-hmm. And when I say fucking we, our side, their side, I wasn't even born, you know, yeah, I'm you Mexican, know. you know, but it's just like I'm American also, whatever. So it's like, uh-huh. but I get, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like we read history, people who write history of the winners or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's cool to see it through that, you know, that lens or whatever. Anyway. Definitely. So um, we get started off. She lives on, she lives on, uh, her, her, is it Okinawa or however? Uh, she lives close to Hiroshima. Hiroshima yeah. is the one she lives. Okay, so she lives near Hiroshima, and she's like her family. They they make seaweed, which I uh-huh. thought was super cool. I know I didn't know I didn't know what they were doing at first. No, it's cool because it kind of looks like it's solar panels. Yeah, I, I thought they were like, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I thought, they, I thought they were like putting. I'm like, wow, look at these fucking look how fucking tech how much tech they got in the Japan fucking, and World War Two really knew how to fucking, fucking get their it, shit you know? done. Yeah. But, but what they were doing is they were drying yeah. seaweed. So um, we, we we find out that she's a. Oh my god, this your boy is nuts. Uh, my boy. Uh, anyway, so she we find out that she's like uh, comes from like a, a very simple family. Yeah, they dry seaweed, they sell seaweed, and she just we just kind of see her as a child growing up with her siblings. She has an older brother and a younger sister. Yeah, and um, you know, obviously there's a whole uh, what's that word? Uh, family. You know, that <laughs> no, no, well, the word <laughs> I was gonna say. There's that dynamic where like yeah. the older brother picks on the younger sister. And, right. Like, like, he's a tyrant in quotations in her eyes or whatever. Um, we also see that she, we learned really early on that she loves art. She loves like drawing and yeah. stuff. And this is kind of an issue because they are not the richest people. So like she's using her pencil to draw as opposed to, to do schoolwork. Right. So her pencil is yeah. like a little nub or whatever. Um, we quickly learn what kind of person she is. She's very, very simple, uh-huh. very, very humble, not very, not very like focused. Her right. mind seems she's, to wander. She's very spacey. Yeah, exactly. She's really spacey. Seems but like she's a, a, she's smart. Oh yeah, no, she's not a dumb person. She's yeah. hardworking. Yeah, it's just she has like an airhead kind of vibe of her, but she's a real sweetheart. You know, absolutely. Um, so time passes. We meet other characters along the way, like a uh, a, a classmate who is kind of bitter because of her, you know, fucking his life's shit, and his brother died in the military. Yeah, in the navy or whatever. And then we see her time lapse, and you know she gets married. Uh, and this is something that I thought was pretty interesting because like she was, it wasn't like she was sold into marriage. It was more like someone is courting you and asking you to marry you without really knowing who you are. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? As an, as maybe because I'm Latino or whatever, I do understand what that's like. Cause that's something that used to happen back culturally. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, I'll marry you. I haven't met you, but we'll get married because you're a girl and I'm a guy and I can take care of you and whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. So she gets married to some man she's never met. Um, that's that's what she thinks. She did meet him before, right? Yeah, like once when they were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were both being kidnapped in quotations by a monster. Uh-huh. Um, again, this 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 movie has, has times where like it goes kind of like a. It's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It, they use her imagination and they kind of like paint a different story through like really a child's happened. eyes. Exactly. Yeah, which I which liked. Which I personally liked. I did too. They. It was really good. People might complain about this. I don't really know. But it was really good at blending reality with, with these, fantasies, these fantasies. So it was yeah. kind of hard to tell what was what. Which I think was... It, it was pretty exceptional in showing like how humans think. Because mm-hmm. you know what's actually happening. Isn't what she's you know what she's saying. Yeah. But as a child, this is how she saw it. Yeah. She was kidnapped by a monster. And she tricked him to go to sleep by like cutting... Was it like cutting some sushi... Some seaweed into like the night sky or whatever. Yeah. He went to sleep. I was like, yeah. oh... Which, you know, I'm sure that is one way to block out a horrible memory of being kidnapped, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so she gets married to this guy, and he's on a, uh, he lives in a different island, 
you know, it's still Japan, but just in a different base, naval base. And she's brought there essentially to be like, uh, to take care of the family because the mother of that family is old and she's got like a bad leg. Yeah. So she instantly gets to work. She instantly starts learning how to do things, how to prepare stuff, what the rules are. And this is when we start kind of realizing that, oh shit, war's picked up because there's rations or whatever. And we kind of start seeing that like things aren't like hunky dory or whatever. Like things are like, things are as like, you know, and as she ages, she also learns like as a kid, it's like, oh, whatever your brother's in the military. Who cares? Yeah. Now it's like, she's older. She's like, oh, my brother's also in the military. But it's just like, uh, he's, he's there because we're at war with people or whatever. Right. So she has like, she learns to, you know, she has issues with her new family, but she learns to get through them, especially like the, the daughter of the family. Right. Who lost her husband. It's a whole thing. She gets, she's really emotional and yeah. she takes it out in like aggression. Yeah. And she, she's like super mean to her, but because our character is super nice, you know, and super like. She rolls with it. Yeah. She just yeah. fucking, she does the, I was telling, I was telling her like, she, she does this thing where she like closes her eyes, tilts her head and just goes. Yeah. The head ah. tilt thing yeah, is always like, like good. It's like, a, like that's what, that's how her, anything that like, like bad happens, anything, it's, any situation that comes up, that's her go-to. But she still looks like pleasant yeah, and like sweet. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, yeah. but that's, that's what she does. <laughs> um, Anyways, the the, you know, the the movie progresses and she starts to build a better relationship with her husband, starts to care for this family more. They start to care for her. Um, and then just war just starts breaking out and it's like they build a, a bomb shelter, right? Yeah. And, you know, in the bomb shelter, you know, they start getting, what's the word? Uh, air raids. You know, they get warnings. Yeah. So they have so to, they to start and, using like, it. Out and... and things just become more dangerous. And the thing right. is, the thing that's surprised about the movie, I knew it was about World War II. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really know more about that. Me, yeah, so same thing. It, so, like I was saying, it, like it is, it legitimately is like the life of a like a civilian during war. Yeah, because never do we see the front lines. Never do we see like generals talking about what's. It's what yeah. she was going through, which I really liked. I thought that was. Super I love cool. that. I feel like in a lot of the U.S. like war movies, we only see war. Yeah, we don't see what's going on back at home, really, yeah. or we see like. Uh, like the internment camps and whatnot yeah. and all the like horrible atrocities that have been caused by all the Nazis, yeah. but we never really see civilian life. But in a couple of Japanese movies that I've seen uh, about World War II, it never focuses on the war. And I think that's interesting. Like Grave of the Fireflies, yeah. it's a couple of orphans. This movie, it's just a, a woman who happens to be in a family where there are a couple of people that are off at war. Yeah. And she's and just she living lives, her life. She lives in, in an island that is a naval base or whatever. Exactly, yeah. So she's just living there. And then um, The Wind Rises. Yeah. The Studio Ghibli movie, it's about like airplanes and the people who built them during World War II. But technically Never not about, about the war. war. Yeah. Yeah, just about the airplanes and shit. So that was pretty cool, seeing them like travel everywhere and interact with different people like before even like anyways that's a whole different thing Mm -hmm. to get into but i just i really like that idea that we're not focusing on the war we're focusing on the people that war affects and how it affects yeah yeah we see how how her life is just changed and how she's to deal with it because yeah yeah we don't see that very often so this was i almost want to say this movie to some people could be considered pretty boring they'd be like oh nothing's going on yeah i don't know things don't happen but things also they they do happen, you know. Like there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's like it feels like because it's pretty slow paced and at yeah. times, and the way they tell a story is a little different because they do time lapses and stuff, and you know there's like time jumps. Like this is yeah. it's now this time, and this is the time. This is the part that fucked me up because since I don't know, you know, when shit pops off because I know shit pops off. I know they drop right because I don't know go, the specific date. I don't know of, this like when the bombs <laughs> drop exactly. and all that. So I don't know. Sure, I'm not a date person either. Yeah. I'm I'm like very much a concept kind of yeah, guy. I so know like what happened. stories are hard for me too. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah, I could follow along. I know everything that's mm-hmm. happening, but then afterwards I would be like, these are the general things. Yeah. And it was pretty and it sounded cool. Yeah. So I was so the whole time <laughs> I was super worried that like um she was gonna go back and die yeah. during the oh, bombing. Yeah, because they kept saying that. She's just like, you know, I might go back home to Hiroshima and like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I kinda miss my family, all yeah. this stuff. And the whole time we're just like, Okay, I don't know when this is, but, but don't if you fucking, fucking go there, it. you're dead. Yeah, you're, bitch, you're gonna die. Like, don't oh, I'm, man, I'm, gonna, like, I'm like, don't do this to me. I'm starting to like you as a right? person. Like exactly. you're, you're too kind. I you really know? appreciate who you are in this world yeah. specifically. You know, you're no one special, but God God, are you fucking special to me? You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, you're not doing anything great. You're just doing what you have to do. And you're Absolutely. taking care of this new family. And there's something, but the whole time it's like, 
bitch, don't you fucking go home. Right. You stay where you are. And all of her interactions with the other people she got to meet throughout the film, too. Like, there was this boy who had a crush on her, and mm-hmm. she had a crush on him. He comes back around later, and is like, he's staying as um, a guest, kind of. Yeah, kind of like... <sighs> I don't remember what it's called, but like during war times, soldiers could come and bunk at your house if they need to. Yeah. So he's doing that there. Um, and they kind of reconnect for a second there, but she's already married and she genuinely loves the, her husband, yeah. but she's also kind of sad. And it's just like, Oh man, these like raw, these, real yeah, emotions. Exactly, these emotions. Going um, on. Okay. So I, um, that's, that's generally what the movie's about. Yeah. And you know, I can't, since people know what happens, this is, I'm assuming historically accurate. We, you know, because I mean, I wasn't there. Yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. um, bombs do drop. Whatever war ends, and it just it just seeing her go throughout all this entire time. Right. So I don't want to spoil any specific things. We'll no. get into spoilers later because things because fucking shit happens. And I want to uh-huh. talk. I want to talk about more about um, like what we thought of the movie before right. we get into spoiling so things. Before we do get into that, how did you feel about this movie? I liked what, it. Yeah, I, I liked it. Um, I liked it a lot. I don't think it was. I don't think it was like action packed or anything. No. I don't think it was like uh, something that um, everybody's gonna love. But it was really easy to watch. I feel like I had an easy time with it. I too. just sat down. I turned it on. I was like, wow. It was. It's pretty long too. It's it, like it was a couple hours. It was a couple yeah. hours. It's like two and a half hours. I'm like, wow, man. Okay, I, I'm chilling. You know, it was great. But I, I really enjoyed it, and I had a good time. Easy to watch. At no point was I like super like oh i'm so fucking bored nothing's happening right because even if it's the same thing like we've we've seen her like do household chores yeah. all right we're seeing her do it again but it's it's always from a little bit different perspective exactly, yeah and she's grown in some ways and you're able to see that and it's not done in a way where it's like see how much she's grown oh my it's God, just like yeah. yeah no it's just like a natural development of things and it's cool seeing how their interactions change throughout it so yeah i had a really yeah. easy casual time watching this and it was pretty emotional at points did too. It, did it make you cry? Um, it, not like cry, cry, yeah. but like my eyes teared up and yeah. then like tears started rolling. But it wasn't like oh, fuck, I can't yeah, it wasn't it. like but no, it was just you. like oh man, okay. And then tears are just coming yeah, no, like at a couple it, of points. There's times in the movie where I was like super sad, and it wasn't yeah. because I'm just like oh, I'm devastated. It was more no. like wow, what a what a scary thing to go through. Right, right? Like, what a horrible time you know war is it's it's giving this horrid horrid situation and it's putting it through the eyes of one of the sweetest people oh, ever and in a really pretty way you yeah. know it's like it's like a beautiful it's a beautiful animation great palette you know it's just like yeah want to see some fucked up want to see war it's just like and some ugh. that juxtaposition had such a powerful effect i oh, thought it reminds me of a uh, fucking this is america child gap you know <laughs> yeah have dude, you seen that video i yet? have seen fucking that fire it, <laughs> i feel like that's a conversation for another time we'll talk about that but man <laughs> that really great song fantastic video you will um, say <laughs> I use that what you well, got from we're that? talking about is that what you got we're from that? you want to say over Japan you say all day I, I, <laughs> double for sub dog double for sub oh my god Jesus Christ <laughs> no, anyways, I don't know anyways. what to do right no. now <laughs> no but I do agree it's a, it is it is a very very weird um like combination like this like the way it looks in yeah. the story and like that backstory of what it is you right know? yeah um <laughs> what, what um what do you like visually what do you think I thought it was pretty stellar visually. Yeah. They they did some really cool things, like I said, with the the main character mm-hmm. making her like a small looking. She looks innocent, yeah, and she looks young. She doesn't look and mature I think at that, all. Yeah, I think the reason they did that is because her personality matches the way she looks a lot. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a smart choice. Loved the color palettes. I loved the design of everything. I liked the fantasy moments. Oh yeah, pretty much like every single part of it. I was just enthralled like yeah. this is spectacular i'm having such a good visual time with this film yeah uh while the story like just powered through i was able to stay captivated by the story and the visuals yeah. they did such a good job i really like um i like i like anytime she drew um because so good she you know she's really good at it the the time when she's painting um like she's painting the for sunset her, yeah, no she's painting for her the ocean for her yeah 
her fucking fellow classmate or whatever. She yeah. did like the bunnies on the water. Right. And they're moving. Uh, that was, I was just so like, great. I was like, oh my God, it's so fucking pretty. Yeah. I love that. It was yeah. beautiful. As a grown ass man, I was like, yeah. oh, fucking bunnies on the water, homie. Dude, oh my God. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that's so creative. And yeah. I, I felt like, because that was pretty early in the film. Yeah. And I just like warmed up I was from like, that. Oh man, I can't wait to see more <laughs> things like this. And we it do just, see, we do see yeah. other things like that. Um, and they do take some artistic liberties. We'll talk about some other ones in, in a bit because I can just spoil around. But they do. They, it's not like a straightforward like th- these fantasy moments are nicely interwoven into the movie. Yeah, and we're like, wow, that's pretty. It's a good change of pace. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it visually looks good. Um, there is one time, and I'll talk about it also later. Sure. Uh, where some animation happened, where it's like this fucking came out of nowhere. Holy shit! And oh like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm fucking. Oh my god, terrified. Um, Beautiful yeah, though, right? Great, great. Oh man, I'm I'm having like chills just thinking, thinking of that about it too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it sounded great. I like the music that they used for it. Yeah. It, I mean, it was nothing. Thing Nothing where I too was like, crazy. Oh my god, this music's Simple, phenomenal! Yeah, yeah, it was good. It really fit with mm-hmm. uh, with everything else, but it wasn't trying to like steal the light, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, man, I liked it. I I, I think I'd watch this again. Um, you know whenever there's something i mean if there's like some downtime and i want to watch something simple like i can put it on while it's really pretty easy to watch mm-hmm. uh i watched it dubbed you probably watch it subbed yeah yeah good dub in my opinion good yeah i figured a lot of um a lot of these movies have good dubs but then for tv shows it's it's inconsistent you can't really predict what a tv show is going to be like but in terms of movies it's almost always good uh who's your favorite character main character main character figure yeah i really liked her husband her husband was really sweet. Yeah, I, I liked just, him too. I was like, you know what? Good guy. Like he like he met her when he was a kid. He loved her. Yeah. He and, it, and he felt he genuinely felt kind of bad about like taking her away from her home, you know? Yeah. Because at first, like, you know, I was saying, like, culturally I understand. But it became to a point where he even apologizes. He's like, Hey, like, I'm sorry I took you away from your home. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't fair to you. But like cause we needed help here. And it's like, I promise to do anything, you know, to make you love me or whatever. Like we can make it work. And I was like, wow. Fucking, yeah, man. Fucking Goro all day. Fucking Team Goro. Fuck Hero. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, I... Uh, I really liked him. And he was nothing he was, special. He, he was, was nothing like... He was nothing super uh, handsome or whatever, you know? I think that's what I liked about this, is that everyone felt just like people. They yeah. didn't feel like they were these heroes or these yeah. like actual like characters. There was no like evil intent or like, I have to be the best person. It was mm-hmm. just like, these are people. Mm-hmm. And that's fantastic. <laughs> One of my favorite bits is when um, she's the her you know the mother is telling her, okay, this is what you can do. You're in charge of ration duties or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, these two people, they she goes like this, like they they fight a lot. And then we see, and like then we see there like when the ration duty, and she's like with two older ladies, and they're just arguing back and forth. And I was like, this poor girl, she has no idea what her life's gonna be. Nope. Um. Yeah. I like this movie. Out of ten, really good time. Um. Eight. Easily an eight. Even eight too. Yeah, it was. I think it was. Uh, it was a good movie that I would watch again with somebody else, and I think it's a movie that a lot of people would be able to watch and enjoy. Um, it's also a good movie for people that don't normally watch anime. Like, yeah, this would be a pretty cool thing because, I, like I was talking about before, our perspective as Americans, United States citizens, mm-hmm. we don't get to see this perspective. Uh, especially from like another country. Like we have an idea of what happened in the United States where it was just like a lot of women working in factories, trying to pick up the jobs that all the men can't do because they're off at war, like all those kinds of things. But this gives us a cool perspective of like war times in a different world. Mm, So this is on Netflix. What do you think? Uh, Better or worse than Violet Evergarden? Worse. Yeah, Violet Evergarden is pretty good. Yeah, it's a fucking... St- Better or worse than Crybaby. Hmm. I mean, well, this isn't a Netflix better original. Better worse than Crybaby. Oh, my God. Okay, well, better. Yeah, I, I like it a lot, too. Yeah. You're right. This is a tough one because it's technically not a Netflix original, but Netflix is doing a good job by acquiring such a good movie. So. Yeah. Well, it's also hard to compare movies to TV shows because they're so different in storytelling and, like, all right, well, you can make that weird-ass fucking fish face over there and just, like... <laughs> Bopping your mouth yeah. open, big yeah. old frown. Super easy to compare them. But uh, yeah, no, I thought this was fantastic, and it's very accessible to people that don't normally watch anime. So this would be a good movie to watch with your mom. Yeah, like you were would, saying this, this is a be... good mom movie. <sighs> Damn it! If they only had it in Spanish, if they were sub in Spanish. I would love it. There you go. There probably is. Probably is. Probably not. I'll check. 
Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> so we gave it a rating. Uh, we're going to talk about spoilers. We're going to talk about stuff that like happened in the movie, things that were like a little more um, intense. Because they're like I said, there's no real like uh, spoilers because we know how, what happens with the war. Yeah. The there's no spoiler, spoiler for the ending. The only but... real spoiler that you know is like, it, does this bitch die or not? And that's what we you know. Yeah. Essentially, we're talking about that. Um, so we're gonna yeah we're gonna get there now. So again, spoil it. I think you should watch it. Um, I think people would enjoy it. Um, again, it's not super action packed or anything, so no. it's not gonna keep you like, you know, it's not you're not gonna be at the edge of your seats. But it is a really really cool thing to watch, in my opinion. Yeah, um, and it's pretty wholesome. Yeah, it's surprisingly yeah, there's, wholesome. There's very there's very minimal parts where I'm just like, oh, that's they took that shit way too far. It happens. Yeah. Well, it, they they're also realistic, but it's the most wholesome approach to, to war. Absolutely, in my, yeah, that I've seen in a long time. Where they don't sugarcoat it either. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, it's mm, good movie. Cool. Okay, we're getting into spoilers. All right, trip. What do you want to talk about first, man? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to talk about the fucked up things that happen here? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, <laughs> the first fucked up thing that happens here, in my opinion. And I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but there's a bit you you, were, you mentioned it earlier uh-huh. where her um her like her friend from yeah. from like from back home comes and sees her yeah and then uh it's really it's kind of awkward because like her husband just like talks to the, the 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 fucking sailor while he's there right he's like hey man you're allowed to stay here but you can't stay in my house uh-huh you can stay in the shed and we'll prepare it for you stay in the shed and it's like okay fine and the guy's like yeah no big deal stay in the shed right yeah and so then the the husband tells the wife the, our main character goes hey uh the bed thing is the bed warmer is ready or whatever. It's a source, some, some sort of thing to warm the mattress. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Take it out there. Uh, you should talk to him. You know, he's your friend. You might not, you might never see him again because, you know, he, he's Tour. probably going to die. You know? Yeah. And he's okay. So she goes out and then her husband locks the door and turns off the lights. And I was like, this, what? I was really confused at first. Like, what is, what's going on here? So yeah. then she goes out into the shed. They, you know, they sit down at the fucking futon thing and they're talking and then they, they get really close uh-huh and they start like getting kind of touchy and it was like whoa this you're you're married like is this is this okay is this and then she stops it and she's like oh she's she she kind of uh voices how she feels because she's like not very vocal about her but she's she worries about other people more than herself yeah and i thought that this was a really defining moment for her character exactly, to show yeah. that when it comes down to it she is strong enough to voice her opinions to things she just knows what situations it matters most yeah so she's like look she t- basically t- runs it down and says like look I-, I i really loved you when we were younger i was hoping you'd marry me it didn't happen i was hoping you'd come back and take me away um, and you know what? I love the man I'm with now. And so this can never happen or whatever this, we yep. can't, we can't be more than anything, whatever this is. And he's just like, man, fuck. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I really liked his reaction too. He's like, you know what? Like I was hopeful. I was really wanting this to work out, but I totally understand. She's like, she's like, you really love this guy or whatever. Like you, she's like, look, you haven't, she, he was happy. That she hadn't changed. He's like, right. he was like, he was like, all this horrible shit thing. and war's going on. It's yeah. Like, but you're still who you are, man. That makes, he goes like, that makes me really happy. And, uh, that, 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 that interaction went, really warmed my heart. But it was, but it, it did. It made me, I liked it too, but it made me feel really weird at first. Like, this is like, I feel kind of uncomfortable. Like, what's the husband implying or whatever? Like, what's he trying to go do your thing and then come back, but I'll never, you know, it was just, it just felt awkward to me, in my opinion. I mean, I understand that. Oh, do um, you? Has your husband ever locked you out? Usually usually okay all right fine i believe you (laughs) but um no that that was the weird part about it it if there wasn't that part i would have related to it a little bit more i thought that their interactions were fantastic Mm -hmm. between uh our main character and her lost love or whatever yeah really good jobs with that but it was weird that the husband did you know yeah i mean in there but it, it was pretty like uh what's the word you were saying earlier, sugarcoated, because he could have been like, yeah. you go out there and you fuck that guy, because he's going to die. You'll never see him again or whatever. But, uh-huh. but it, you know, but it was just like, hey, man, go see your go, you go see your boy. He's probably not going to make it. No big deal. MBD, you know. Yeah. Um. Anyways, that was one. Uh, I think the next really fucked up thing that happens is, is it the... the yeah. Yeah, okay. So here we go. So uh, the... Well, the, I think... I don't know. There was another scene that I I can't remember if it happened beforehand or not. Um, but is it the one? Were, like, oh, was it when the first 
like set of bombs like air raid comes through i mean there was the first air raid or whatever but that's that's something else then there was a there was a scene where they were just like shooting at the ground and whatnot mm-hmm. was that before or after the bombing we talk about scene? shooting the ground um they were just like doing some like shooting just in the general area and she's standing outside in like a field uh by some like crops oh and, and the- she's just kind of staring and then her husband comes and like jumps on her and that's like puts later. her down. Okay, that that's is later. Late, yeah, it's late, it's okay, later. sorry, I'm a little bit mixed up okay. right now, but mm. yeah. The next big fucked up thing is that so the 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 sister, or her sister in law, yeah, has a has a daughter and a son that mm-hmm. we later meet. Realize that the reason she's so bitter is because um, her husband died. You know, so she's a widow, and then her husband's family uh, took away. Her eldest son, because he's now the heir of the family or whatever. Right. And he took away their, her watch shop or whatever. So it's fucked up. Super fucked. So she's kind of just a mad, mad lady. She takes it out on this fucking character. Anyways, she has a daughter. The, daughter. the daughter spends time with the family. And she becomes friends with our main character or whatever. And, you know, at, it takes a while. But the mom, the sister eventually, like, warms up to the do- to the sister, to the new wife or whatever. And uh, allows her to like to hey you can take care of my kid yeah he's like I you know I trust you enough to be around my child or whatever and that's a pretty big step for her yeah and um so air raids are get, coming down more recently the uh, the father of the house uh, is in the hospital because from the last air raid he got hurt or whatever and so he, yeah. he was interned for he was in the hospital for a while and no one knew for they thought he was dead but he's okay so it looks like we're being told that uh. They're gonna go see the older brother of the, you know, the, the, the sis. But when reality, the, the mom's gonna go take the kid, the little girl, to live with the other family because it's more yeah. safe over there. So when they're gonna go buy plane tickets, she's like, "Okay, go take my my daughter and go take her to see her grandpa, or whatever." And they do, and when they, you know, and then a fucking air raid happens, make it to a bunker, which is good. They yeah. sur- they survive the bunker. I mean, the the air raid, and I'm like, oh my god, which is super stressful, in my opinion. Yeah, you know? super scary. And you know when they come out too, it's like it's desolate. Yeah, you know everything you is fucked. Yeah. yeah, they live on a hilltop. You know where their house is. Uh huh. So they do get some of the air raid, but it's usually not as bad as you know until we see it like really up close. Yeah. So they're walking along a pathway or whatever, and she's holding hit uh, like she's like walking hand in hand on her right side. Yeah. And like she, the little girl likes seeing the boats, so they're trying to. There's like a piece of the like a wall, a barrier wall. They have like blasted and uh they're like oh let's try to see the boats or whatever and, and someone yells like hey be careful it's not safe over there it's like okay you know we're coming and then yeah. like she remembers like being told that, like sometimes like enemy bombs will like uh they'll malfunction be, yeah they're duds and they're they'll duds, have like an impact crater but they won't explode they haven't exploded yet and so the, just when that happens like the bomb like that impacted and broke this fucking barrier goes off and in comes the most beautiful scene in the whole movie i thought it was like the art style that they did for it just like all these fizzling like sparks and stuff yeah. it, it really felt powerful yeah. and they did such a good job animating it in a way that felt different than anything else mm-hmm. you knew that this was like oh shit this is a big moment yeah and um just to find out you know after this really good like you know piece of animation you know she wakes up and the uh her niece right that's what it is yeah her, her niece dies Yep. And she loses her, like, her right hand in the explosion. Right. And so, like, you know, it's a big deal for her being able to draw. It's a real passion of her. She really likes it. And now she can't because she's right-handed or whatever. Right. Super sad. And, you know, obviously she's blamed by the mother. Everybody else doesn't blame her. Everybody else is like, hey, we're sorry this happened and we're glad you're alive. Yeah. Really rough. And it takes a lot of the joy out of her main character because she's just like, she's like, she blames herself so much. She's yeah. like, if only I was on this side. If only we hadn't stopped. If only, like, there's so many things that go through her head, you know? Right. And uh, that that really, really fucked with me. I was like, oh, my God. I knew, because, you know, you know war is fucked yeah. up. I, but I didn't know this really cutesy anime, whatever, would take it to a level like that. Yeah, it did. Uh, and this is the point where I really wanted to know your opinion on it, because I knew clearly that part's going to be impactful, and that's, like, a big thing. But uh, for me... I, you know, if I lost one of my arms, oh, like yeah. that would be fucking horrible. Yeah. But I don't do something that I'm passionate about, especially the only thing for her that like takes her away from this world. Yeah. She's able to draw. She's able to do yeah. things. And that's like her it, outlet, yeah. you know, to have that taken away from you. Yeah. yeah. And like as an artist, how, how that would, would that you would feel suck. about that? Um, I always, you know, 
things I really like, you know, I like watching things. So like, I'm always uh-huh. like, oh man, I would hate to go blind. Uh-huh. I would hate not to be able to hear things. I would love to lose my, if anything, I'd be like, I'd go mute in a heartbeat. That's fine. You know, whatever. I, I'd no longer do a podcast, but at least I'd be able to still enjoy the world around me. Yeah. But losing, like losing something important, like if, it's like an athlete losing the ability to, to walk or something like that. Like, right. That's fucking sucks. So as an artist, losing, like losing the, like a hand, specifically your right hand, which I, you know, which yeah. I draw with. I draw with my left hand. hand. I'm fucking shit house at drawing with my left hand. Yeah, I am I no mean, good. You could do your best, but it would take oh, so God. long to get to anywhere near where yeah. you would be. Yeah. So yeah, that's super. It's super rough. Um, I and um, since we're talking about like the uh, fantasy moments of anime, whatever animation, this was one of them. Another one I liked was uh, there's an air raid and like bombs are going off in the sky or whatever. They're uh-huh. like anti like air fucking missiles or whatever and they're like then when they blow up they blow up with like paint paint splatters i was like wow. that was gorgeous that was so pretty and then like that's when like the dad comes in and like tackles there's like what are you fucking doing you idiot get down like you yeah. can't just like just look at the fucking things blowing up anyways loses her hand really fucked this it takes a huge toll on her character for a bit she actually like it's really rough also because she wants to be helpful but now she's a burden you know yeah now the mom has to get back to work so now, she still tries her best though to do yeah. everything she can even though she only has one hand and she's she's no good at it which uh-huh. is like god this fucking sucks because you know now she feels like she has a less of a place in the world you know yeah. like she she's like hey man I, I was here to do this one thing and now i can't do this one thing and yeah. i feel like shit and she can't even adequately rinse what yeah rice, rice which is like just, something you're supposed to do you know uh, fucking movie gets sadder along the way. Like she gets, she goes through depression. Her husband gets fucking drafted or whatever. Yep. Uh, she, I think that draft happened before that. But then like the house, there's like a a weapon that lands in the house and lights it on fire. Uh huh. This really scared me. She like tries to t- turn it off herself and she catches on fire. I was like, oh my god, this is fucking terrifying. Someone help her. They do help her eventually. Um, but the worst part I think is like then we get to see she has this in- internal battle about like going back home. Uh, cause there's, you know, she feels useless. There's this bit where like, she's just walking out in the middle of an air raid and her husband like tackles her, throws into a trench and like holds her there. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I yeah. want to go home. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. He's like, fine, fucking do whatever you want. You know? Cause he's like, he's also stressed, man. He's also you know, going through this. Yeah. And he just wants her to like, to be happy and okay. And she, he doesn't know how to help her. Um, so he's just, she's, he, she has decided to go home and I was like, fuck. This is bad because I know she's gonna fucking die if she goes home. Yeah, you're ready. Fucking kill she's her. going to Hiroshima. It's in like the heart of the war like, right yeah, now. Like, dude, this is fucking. Don't. I'm like, I'm like, like yelling. Don't yeah. fucking do it. There. It's not only like there are air raids. There are air raids every no, day. And stop. And they last for hours. Yeah. It's just like cool. You just bunker down, and it's just like their life becomes just so fucking miserable. Nobody's getting any sleep. Yeah. Fucking rations have gone cut down way. They're like fucking. They're like it's the thick of the war, you know. And um. She's like, she's decided I'm going to go back home, but she can't go home until she like sees a doctor. Yeah. And, she, the doctor, and even then her husband's like, you know what? I support you going home. I'm so sorry that I brought you to my family. Yeah. This area is terrible. It's constant air raids. Hiroshima safe. You should go there. Yeah. Um. So what the fuck? Uh, she decides to go home. Can't get an appointment until a week later or whatever. Yeah. And so that's why she has to wait. And then um, she gets this really nice moment with like her sister-in-law. She's like, hey, look. I'm sorry I blamed you for the death of my child or whatever. It's like, it really sucks. This is hard for me. Um, but that wasn't fair to you. You know, I really, I really do love you and care about you. And, you know, I know. And I that warmed me so much. Oh, I yeah. was like, oh my God. And then, uh, thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Finally, like after all these hardships and whatnot, I'm like, ah, oh, that's what she needed. A you know? horrible character is being so kind. And that's like such a good thing. I mean, yeah. she's still a bitch. Don't get me wrong. She like afterwards, right. she's still a bitch, but yeah. like, we, you get it. She just is a bitch or whatever. Yeah. But she's like, look, I can't. And she doesn't mean bad by no. it. <laughs> she's like, just, you she's can tell. Just, she's gone. That woman has gone through a lot and of life. She's kind of a broken person, yeah, too. Yeah, like, she so. lost her husband. She lost her son, you know, not forever, but, like, she's been taken away. Yeah. Lost her daughter. You know, it's, things are not. Some people find a driving force in anger. Yeah. So, anyway, if that so gets you going, she sure. Apolog- she apologizes. This is, you know, the our main character's like, you know what? Thank you so much. And, uh, I, you know what? I think I am going to stay. You know, I, yeah. I want to, I want to make this work. And then I was like, oh, fucking so I good. I felt so good. I right. was like, oh, she's not going to die. Right. Like, and right. everyone's like, happy like the now. Fucking, the sweetest moment ever. And then we fucking poof. Like, they're just like this flash. Like a second later. And, and like, there's like, whoa, what the fuck, the fuck was, was that? that? That was pretty cool. And then, then there's like an earthquake and the like yeah. shockwave and like, what the fuck happened? And this yeah. is the part that really fucked me up. Because I know what happened. No one else knows what no, happened. No, yeah. And this is what, the reason it was so scary is because um, 
they played it off like they like it would have happened in real life. You know, yeah. like people are like, huh, what happened? I guess we'll check the radio. Radio's not working. Huh. We get no response from Hiroshima. Something must happen. Yeah. I guess we'll figure out what happens. And like, meanwhile, like panels and doors and stuff are like just flying, flying over, trees yeah. and whatnot. And like, people slowly are piecing together like, hey, man, something happened in Hiroshima. We're not sure, sure what it is, uh, but we need to help them or whatever, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, just how scary that would be. Like, if we had no technology and like, and shit happened, I don't know, fucking Sacramento, but like, oh, man, something went down. Yeah. And it'd just be word of mouth. And eventually he's like, well, I guess we got to go check what it is and see what it is. Like, holy shit. Right. Imagine going to Hiroshima and be like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah. Um, and this was, yeah, this was an impactful moment because, like, very quickly she realizes her family's, like, all dead. There's yeah. this girl that she met very briefly, and <laughs> I guess they, like, wrote a couple of letters to each other. Um, and now she's dead. Yeah. She said that she was going to go to Hiroshima. Yeah. And, like, that was a really sweet character, too, yeah. who just, like, our main character is lost in a city and she's like, oh, I, I don't know where to go. Can yeah. you tell me how to get back home? And then this girl comes up and she's like, Oh, you know, like you don't know how to get home. I, I mean, I'll try to help you. Mm-hmm. And she like, our main character starts drawing some stuff or has been drawing things. She's like, Whoa, look wow, at that. Like, nice. that's amazing. You're so talented. Yeah. And then they like draw some pictures and she has this memory from that. And, uh, I, it, it's brought up it's, later yeah, all, and that's yeah. like pretty powerful and i'm like wow this is really beautiful the way that they intertwine all these personal lives and stories that we don't know about but then they suddenly come back together and what's what's super fucking dark is that like um there's a moment where like they're all the women in you know this this island like come to like hey we're gonna make sandals for yeah. people in hiroshima because because then they're like oh so they drop some sort of bomb or something or a new weapon and it looks like the roads are all no good and people need new shoes or whatever. Yeah. So they're making like sandals that are like, I don't know, fucking whatever. Whatever something. you can, like, yeah. And, and they're like, you know, they're, it's like, okay, cool. And like, there's a couple of ladies like, we're going to go to Hiroshima and like give these away. And then like kind of zoom out and there's just this like charred body yeah. like, on the side of the building. It just kind of like, like, ba- like looks like a zombie just like breathing yeah. and it's like, and then later on it's, you know, taken away. And la- only to later on find out that the body that was there was, like, the son of whoever lived in that house. Like, he walked from Hiroshima to, you know, where he was and, like, just parked it there and For died. like, three days, I yeah. think they and said no he one walked. Knew who, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, and then no one knew who he was because his body was so just fucking destroyed. Yeah. That no one could identify him. And, you know... And they find out later that it was the son and they just yeah, completely lose like, oh, it. Like, yeah, it's so fucking sad. Um, so, you know what? You know, obviously, we know what happens next. Uh, fucking the J- Japan, you know, they surrender. And this is what, like, we see this, like, this moment where our main character fucking loses This was it. Uh, really hard to watch, Yeah, because, like, and I imagine this is how it must have been, you know, like, if we would have lost the war, people would have been fucking yeah. pissed. Well, because it's a matter of, like, the war is over and everyone's crying and they're so happy. They're like, oh, my God, but it was all lost. worth it. We yeah. did it. Yeah, and then they lose and then they realize all these people that they loved are dead and they've been trying so hard to stay positive yeah. through all these negative experiences and they've just been doing what they can to survive and they find out they lose yeah. and they're like the only for what, the only what was it yeah. worth we should have never fucking gotten into this the that's only a whole different situation is, well it's over like yeah. no no and it's it there's peace now right that's a consolation yeah. but at what cost you know exactly. and she's so mad because she's just like what the fuck like my my niece died you know and like and we're just gonna let this go, like, like you know, my her brother also throughout the in the, who joined the military also died. You know, I was like, what? We're just gonna pretend like it's all okay. Like I'm still up. Oh, she's like, I have one hand. I'm fucking ready to go. You know, it's just like, look, man. Yeah, it's not that simple. I can imagine that just that rage, and it's crazy because like she's not like a a mean or mad person. But, no, but, she, but I mean, she had to control her emotions more yeah. than like anyone else in the movie. Oh, yeah, she endured and a that lot. That takes a toll. That she takes lost a her huge fucking, toll. Uh, her arm. Ah, fuck. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, War gets, you know, war, movie ends, war ends or whatever, and she goes back to Hiroshima. She sees what's left of her village or whatever, her house, mm-hmm. and she meets up with her sister who luckily survived the blast. Or whatever, oh, my God. Only to find out that she's not feeling very well. She shows her some, like, sores. And again, because I know who I am, like, fuck, that's just, like, radiation poisoning. This bitch is going to die. Which yeah. is super sad also. So she says she loses everybody except for her grandmom or something like that. I think it's the only person that really survived. Yeah, just from her immediate family yeah, versus her, her, mo- her adopted mom, her family. Her dad, her fucking brother, her younger sister yeah they're all gone it's just like this is fucking so depressing and uh and then this this thing is kind of what um you know so her her and her husband decide like hey man we're gonna make this work you know um i've got a new job here and um 
you know, we're going to, we're going to be happy. We're going to fucking figure this out or whatever. And it's like, okay, good. And then there's a scene where like, we see, this is what really fucked me up. There's a scene where like, we see the explosion happen. Yeah. Whatever, right. And we see this lady and this other kid be affected by it. And the lady protects the little boy or little girl. Um, and like, but her shit gets fucked. She gets like glass thrown into her, like on her face and her arm and she loses her, her arm, you know, her hand. Uh-huh. And like, she, you see her stagger. She's all bloody taking care of the kid. And then like some time passes. I don't, maybe it's a few days or whatever. It's at least a couple days. Yeah. yeah. And then the body is, just, and the kid's just still chilling with his body. The body's dead. It's, it's like rotten. F- rotting. It's fucking horrible. It's gnarly. It's like being eaten by maggots and there are flies like, all it over. Was like, it's so it was gross. It's so gross. Just because like, you know, again, really chipper movie, this fucking horrible scene comes out, you know? And then like the, we see the kid starting to like scrounge around how to survive and he like picks up a piece of food that comes up that's on the ground and he looks up and he sees our main character who lost her hand or whatever and he kind of reminds her of her i'm assuming mother or whatever yeah. who lost her hand and she like they're kind of she's like oh fuck like she doesn't know how to react and they they decide to adopt the kid they bring mm-hmm. it back it's like full, full of fuck this is also they're eating watermelon yeah, and yeah. that's had like a, a small little bit in every, motif yeah, yeah. So I thought that that was another powerful thing that they were able to do with that scene, which was already incredibly powerful. Just great stuff. And yeah, they 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 bring this kid back home. They bring the little girl back home and like, they're like, she's full of fucking lice and like, oh, we got to bathe her or whatever. And then the credits start rolling. Also, like burn her clothes, bathe her. Everybody Everybody like, shower. Everybody burn everything she's touched, you know? And then the credits start rolling. I was like, oh man, what a, in my head, like what a weird way to end. And then in the credits, we see the daughter, the girl, New, the new adopted daughter, like growing up and being taught to sew, you know, cooking and giving her, you know, stuff for other people, and I was like, wow, like what a fucking, what a fucking good ending. Yeah, I was, I was tearing up during all that end sequence. I think there. there's something at the very, very end too. I remember, did you watch the very end? I did, but I, I can't. Think I, of I, it. I know there's something at the very end. I can't remember what it is, but it's nice. I was like, ah, oh, that's fucking sweet or whatever. It was, yeah, it was a really good movie. It had so many different elements to it, where. We knew it was about World War II. We <laughs> knew it was going to be sad, but we didn't know in what ways yeah. throughout the whole movie. It's just like, am I going to be sad because our main character dies? Am I going to be sad because fucking her husband dies, the whole family dies? Or am I going to be sad because she's ostracized and yeah. like abused? Or is she going to get like, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's just like a grab bag of like, oh my God, okay, it's just... I'm going to be sad is the one thing yeah. you know. You're like, this is World War II. This is the losing side. This is not going to be like a we did it kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is like, going to be like, you know, hip hip. None of that, you know. No. Um, the two moments that really fucked me, uh, like mentally, just like there's the the time where like it's one of the first serious air raids, and we see like all these planes coming over. Yeah, and we see an angle where like all the bombs are dropping. And yeah. Like, oh my god it was just like it was terrifying yeah because i mean it, it, for whatever reason in my head i imagine like a few going out in like a big old line just like all right this big old line's gonna get bombed and yeah. it's just a few things no. no it's like 30 bombs in a cluster just all just dropping dropping from and the I'm like, sky holy fuck that that was something right? that i never really imagined that was it was so jarring at seeing that like i was like because it's animated beautifully i was like yeah. oh my god that is fucking terrifying that moment really fucking scared me um took me like a moment to like readjust like okay that's right this is you know this is a serious thing yeah and then the moment where we see like the uh the other mother and the and the daughter or whatever and like she gets fucking fucking boosted by this fucking explosion and she's like rotting i was like oh my god what a fucking <sighs> yeah. what a gnarly mess um for it took me a while to fit, like to realize what was going on i was like what happened is this like a like an else story like is this like a what if you know like is this like and i was like oh Okay, it's just, it's just some, some more, some more sad shit. Uh-huh. <sighs> Man, that being said, it's still a great movie. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. definitely. It, it's it, talking about it and bringing back all these visuals and stuff make me like it more. Yeah, absolutely. at the time I was like, this was a really good movie, and now reflecting, I'm like, this was a phenomenal movie. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was really good. Um, anything you'd change, or anything you'd want different. I mean, I, like I mentioned before, her whole size and like look mm-hmm. kind of threw me off, but it also like really fits with her persona. So I don't know. That's the one thing that I'm like, I might adjust that just to make it more relatable to everybody versus mm-hmm. people that can kind of like figure that out. Cause they've watched enough anime and cartoons and shit to know that these perspectives are changed based on certain characterizations. Yeah. So I don't know. 
in my movie, in my in my opinion, it's a pretty solid flick. There's nothing I'd really like because, like, you know, I'd like to say like just because of the movie goer and be like, oh man, I'd like to see more action. But it's like, you know what? This isn't that movie. No. No, this was not an action yeah. movie. There, there are action parts in it, like like oh my god, it's super intense. But it's not like that's not their goal. Their goal was, is to show yeah. you the, like how scary war is and how um, normal people suffered through it and how they tried to like you know try to survive throughout it. And yeah, it's uh, it's it pretty, was really powerful. Yeah, it's pretty heavy, and it's you know it's good though. And I think that it's especially poignant during this time in our lives where we're not experiencing the th- same things at all. And we're very fortunate to do that. But war is the happening like all over the fucking world yeah. right now. And we're very fortunate to not be a part of it. But yeah. you know that like that what these characters went through in this movie were not even a fraction of how bad it gets. Yeah. It was, it was terrible what happened in this and it's not even close to how bad it is now. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of, it's something that helps you uh, put things in perspective in a certain way. Um, I thought, yeah, this was just a dynamite movie. Loved it. It was gorgeous. It was sweet. It was powerful. It had like every element that you need to make a movie good. Yeah. Thanks. Me too, man. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's, that's, uh, in this corner of the world, I check it out. If I were you, I think it's really good. Um, Trip, what do we talk about next week? Have we decided? Yeah, next week we're going to watch Ninja Batman. Hey, oh, or is it Batman Ninja? It's both. Whatever. It flips back and forth. I, I think it's Batman Ninja, mm. but then I keep seeing it as Ninja, Ninja Batman. Batman. So it's, I don't really know. It's a new, uh, new 3D anime of uh, Batman, but it's like he's a samurai or some shit like that. It's supposed to be a ninja. Uh, it's supposed to be a samurai. Uh, so we'll, we'll fucking figure it out. It's a samurai. Fucking, uh, <sighs> Anyway, it's getting horrible reviews, so we can't wait to watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's three hours long. Three fucking it's hours. It's not three hours. It's two hours and 50 minutes. Okay, you got me. I got My you. bad. I always I get dramatic. We I'm were going to watch something else. We're deciding to watch this because it's more, um, it's relevant, right? Like, it yeah, just it came just out. Dropped. The other thing we we're going to review was the new live action Kakaguri, but we already watched Kakaguri, and we already know this new live action one's going to be trash. We will for sure watch it eventually. Uh huh. Um, but as of right now, Ninja Batman or Batman Ninja takes precedent. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. So uh, that's the show. Hey, if you like our logo, hit up Aaron from TurvyTops.com. Super great person to work with. If you like our theme song, hit up Tom Nasser. He's okay to work with. True. Uh, Nasser, N-A-S-R. Trip, where can people find us? People can find us on Facebook. Look up the Instant Ramen Podcast. Same thing goes for Instagram. Look up the Instant Ramen Podcast. If you want to shoot us a tweet, tweet at Instant Ramen Pod. Pod and of course, you could send us an email to instantramenpodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, I haven't blogged in a minute, but maybe I will. Maybe Feeling, I will. Oh my god, I would love that. I maybe want I that won't. to happen. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with that soon. And I had a good time this week. Yeah, nice, fun. nice emotional, different feeling time. Yeah, no, it's like tears, but not I mean, like sadness, but not like Violet Evergarden sadness. No, you know? this is like a different. This is like a new. Sadness. New level of sadness yeah. acquired. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, uh, this is Batman One. I'll see you around from Chris. Hey, Trip, don't forget. Just that hot water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like 40 uh. bucks for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice background. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> no, <isn't that> fucking <laughs> good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. Hey. I was like, I had to put this in my back. I just got the ultimate muscle as my lock screen. I was just like, yeah. oh, I need this. I need this in my back. I was like, but then I got to. Take away the Instagram podcast when I was like, it's fine. <laughs> Triple understand. I listened to it. Uh, we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm liking that show a lot. It's pretty fun. I want to see more of uh, the bartender. The blonde chick? No, the bartender. I don't know. I don't think you're that far then. I know. Alrighty. Okay. Hey, welcome back to the episode of Instagram podcast. I'm your host, Juan. As always, my coach is here with me. Hey Trip. Mm, hello. How you doing, man? I'm pretty good. It's been on. It's, oh, your phone's getting crunchy. Did it? Oh, I just put oh, it on, put it on pilot thing. Well, we can go again if you want. All right, let's go again. Hey, welcome back to the episode of Instant Rom Podcast. I'm your host Juan. As always, my co-host here with me. Hey Trip. Hi. How's it going, homie? It's pretty good. Uh, you know, it's been a long week since you know we've what? We seen try that each again. other. Let's go one more time. All right, let's go one more time. <clears throat> For reals this time. Don't hurt your hands. 
Hey, welcome back to the episode of the Instagram Podcast. <laughs> so funny, you just, your, your hands hit so hard. <laughs> that was the hardest one yet. You're like, don't hurt your hands. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking destroy these hands. Okay, hold on. <laughs> it's a soft clap. Okay, just a soft <clears throat> clap. Go. <laughs> what <are> you, <laughs> right when you said go. <laughs> okay, go for it. 